All right, there's a sanderling bathing again. See, now you gotta watch your shadow on them. Try and grab some of these as they run by. <laughs> Look at those legs go. <sighs> I don't know what to do, what to do. Yeah, I guess I could come up a little higher and work with some of these reflections here. See that? Now I'm seeing a little bit more of that, which is kind of nice. But I don't know, it just sort of feels like it loses that dreamy feeling when you come up this higher perspective like this. There we go. Grab that. Come on. Always waiting for them to turn their head into that light. Man, the sun just popped a little bit more. It looks amazing. That's nice. That's good with the reflection. Okay. Oh, watch out for this wave. Hey, what's up everyone? All right, just wrapped up a quick evening shoot here. So I just got back to New Jersey yesterday and this morning I had a warbler client. So I was out in the forest photographing them. And this evening I decided, let me go out and see if I can do some shorebird stuff. Uh, I had a few things in mind I wanted to try. None of them really panned out. Um, I was gonna come out and really try and target one specific thing, but the location and the lighting and the tides and all that didn't work out. I didn't check any of that out. I just came out to see what I could photograph. Uh, so this was kind of last minute. I had been working all day and just decided, you know what? Uh, based on the forecast, the next couple days look like maybe not the best light or weather. It's going to get colder. It's already pretty cold, but it's going to get even colder and it looked like kind of cloudy skies for the next couple days. And those were the first chances I would have in between all my other work to get out and shoot. So I just last minute went out today to see if I could make something happen. So not a lot of planning went into this, but this is a location I used to shoot a ton when I lived in New Jersey. So I know the spot really well, uh, but I haven't shot it in a few years in the spring and I didn't really know what to expect here. So there used to be an amazing least turn colony just starting like right behind me here. In fact, sometimes you'd see birds kind of right over here. Uh, that colony collapsed two, three years ago, something like that. And so I knew that they had minimized, but I didn't see a single bird out here. So I think it completely collapsed. I think it's, it's no good anymore. So I was kind of expecting that. Uh, but shorebird migration is not quite kicked in yet. Um, so we're not getting a lot of other birds coming through up here in New Jersey yet. It's, um, what is today's date? I think it's March. I'm sorry, geez, March. It's, I think it's April. What is it? Let me see if this, let me see, maybe my camera will tell me. Uh, yeah, it's the 21st. So, um, nearing the end of April, but not quite there. I think we got to get a little bit more into May to really start getting some of these shorebirds migrating through. In any case, I came out here, the tide was high. Also, from the last time I've been here, half of this beach is gone. It used to be a really wide beach, a lot of flat area. At higher tides, pools would form and you could shoot back into them. It was amazing. The water's right up to where it's kind of like a sheer cliff now of sand. You know, not that much, that maybe only like this tall, but um, there's no wide open flats to shoot anymore. It's all been eroded away. So that was a surprise. And so there was zero opportunity to shoot anything backlit, which was unfortunate. Uh, that's what I was really hoping to concentrate on this evening, but I made the best of it. I ended up getting some really nice portraits of some laughing gulls, which look beautiful right now. Uh, very underrated bird. I think a lot of people locally overlook them, but they are just stunners, especially like you'll see how close some of them went. One of them came like, three feet, four feet away, completely inside minimum focus. I'll have a good shot of it on the GoPro here. Um, and the sanderlings were running around. I tried some laughing gulls in flight, but the wind direction was not working. They were flying away from me, as you'll see most of the time. And so that was a big challenge. So yeah, it was a really tough outing. Um, you'll hear me talking at one point if I leave that in the edit, but I kind of just, I didn't really have any ideas. I'm just like, I feel like I'm just shooting boring flat lit portraits. The light was great and they would normally be a beautiful shot. I mean, they were a beautiful shot, but they were nothing creative, nothing I haven't shot so many times before. And so it just felt pretty uninspiring. I wasn't prepared mentally or physically to get in the water or even to lay in the water and get wet. It was just too cold out and I didn't want to deal with that tonight because I have to go, I'm staying in the van. I got to go back and deal with that. Plus I got a workshop in the morning, so I don't have a lot of time to kind of fool around with that. Um, so it was just a, you know, a logistical decision and a, I don't feel like getting a complete mess decision that I didn't want to get in the water at all. Um, 
And I honestly, I would have froze with what I'm wearing right now. I would have had to do probably a dry suit or just some additional clothing to try and stay a little bit more dry in the shallow waves there. So it just wasn't, it wasn't happening. That was, that was a no-go today. Um, and what else? So yeah, you know, just uh, an impromptu shoot. Um, I got some shots that are really nice and clean. Uh, it's a great example of just be patient and lay down and those birds will come right to you. I did a little bit of crawling in, but for the most part, you'll see I was kind of stationary, letting the birds come and go and that sort of thing. So it worked out really well. Um, yeah, not a lot much else to say about it other than I'm cold and my sentences aren't flowing because I just said not a lot much to say. <laughs> not much more to say about this shoot. Uh, I do plan on while I'm here doing more targeted things like I've been talking about but uh, this one I just didn't have time like I said it was just kind of a, a quick impromptu one so uh, I'll try and keep the edits kind of quick and sweet on this one and this will be a good day to show you I did have um, some of the uh, members asked me logistically how do I handle all kinds of stuff how do I handle the clothing and everything especially living in the van so I'll do a separate video right after this uh, showing that so if you want you can watch that below this setup video but that was the setup for it guys um, just to let you know I'm in the north end of Ocean City New Jersey there's a beach here right at the north end it's really cool because if you go one direction you can actually get the sun setting over the water back in the bay there uh, but I never really had many birds there so I kind of went the other direction um, but yeah that's that's where I'm at that was the setup and I hope you guys enjoy this one Hey, what's up everyone? All right, just got back. Um, so today I actually put my keys in this backpack because this is where all my recording gear goes for these behind the scenes videos to do these lessons. So uh, that's that was easy. But if I was shooting and not using the whole recording setup, um, I have a little waterproof pouch just for my my key, you know, like the key and the, it's, it's the key and remote in one. Um, so I would normally put that in this waterproof pouch and then just zip it up in my pants pocket. Uh, that way I can get wet and do whatever I want with it. So the things I have to deal with when I get back are cleaning up the gear and myself and trying not to make too much of a mess of the van. So step one, paintbrush, just cheap paintbrush. You can get any hardware store. I order mine off Amazon because I order everything off Amazon. Anyway, um, I hit up the camera with that. It's amazing how well it works to brush sand off. Um, I don't know if you guys can see here, but I'll try and show you some sand in here and it just brushes it right off. Um, look at all the sand in and around the, the lens hood here. Uh, and you can see it just takes it right out, no problem. Just gone, brushes it right off. Unless it's like really crusty on there. Um, you know, it's, even if it's wet, even if it's wet sand, it gets rid of it like amazing. So this is one of the best tricks uh, I found to deal with sand on the beach. Um, I was just laying my camera down in the sand and the, the lens, so it would hit the lens hood. You can see right there. So I just clean that up. So that's kind of step one of cleaning up. Um, and then, uh, I guess I can turn the camera off. I think I'm done shooting for today. And then, uh, I gotta clean myself up. Dude, I don't know what is up with the beach sand here, but my feet were like black when I came back. So, what I actually did was, the grass right here, you, know, you guys can't see this. The grass right here, as I was walking up, is kind of damp. And so, I actually just drug my feet right through it. And it actually cleaned up my feet pretty good. But, in any case, Paintbrush works great on your feet and uh, clothing as well. So it's really good for that, okay? So I'm going to do that, brush my feet off as good as possible right now. That being said, it's not gonna clean me up enough, you know? Um, that's only gonna get me so far. So try and get most of the sand off my clothing, myself, Thankfully, like I said, I was not getting wet, as you saw in the setup video. So I don't have to deal with like soaking wet sand and a mess. Um, all right, so this was just some extra stuff for behind the scenes. So pants are feeling pretty good now. Um, I do just wear a bathing suit under this all the time whenever I go shorebird shooting. And so 
I can just take the the pants off and then same thing just you know where I was like the zipper and stuff like that just kind of brush that out and then I'll just go shake these pants out really good uh, and that's pretty much it for the pants um, and then shirt will be the same thing uh, I'll just take the shirt off and trade that out. Um, but one last thing I do to rinse up here before I'm done is I'm gonna turn on my water, which actually I left on before I left today. Try to keep things closed so I don't get bugs in there because it drives me insane trying to sleep at night. So on the outside here, I have an outdoor shower, which is pretty cool. So just gonna go ahead and unlock that. And then I can just turn that on and then actually like fully rinse up my feet really good here and just make sure I got rid of all that sand so I don't have to get in bed and get sand all over in the van. And then I'll just dry off with a towel that I will leave laying around until that dries before I put it back away. I have um, towels that are supposed to be like, um, what do they call it? Like, I don't know. It doesn't get all funky. I don't know how well it works. I mean, it, it seems to actually work pretty well. I shouldn't say I don't know how well it works because I never seem to have like really bad smelling towels and I'll reuse them. But the other nice thing about these towels is you can see they fold up really small, so they're thin. They're not like, um, they're not like a, uh, a big heavy beach towel. And so uh, they're really good for drying, but they fold up small. And when they dry out, I can just reuse it a couple times. Like this is always the towel that I use for beach drying and marsh drying and basically all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, I don't use this for when I go shower and stuff. I have other towels I use, which are the same kind, but uh, I keep this one for all the dirty stuff basically is what I'm saying. And yeah. Every time I get to a laundromat, I'll wash it. So that's pretty much it. Uh, there, I'm all set and cleaned up. I just gotta deal with changing my shirt. Uh, let me put a light on here. Uh, actually, I'll put one on back here. Um, so yeah, I just gotta deal with uh, getting out of the shirt. Um, and then I will actually have to pack up the gear um, I'll put that back in here. I have a closet where everything can just go in and I don't have to put anything in a bag or anything like that. I actually have like a uh, foam cutouts and stuff like that for the gear. And then I will charge the battery, um, over, well, maybe not tonight. I have a spare battery that I'll use tomorrow. Uh, but then tomorrow I'll charge the battery and then I will import everything into the computer and organize it all as well. So that way, um, I don't lose track of anything. So import the photos into Lightroom, put them in a collection for this particular lesson, and then all the video footage off the GoPro and off the recording device through the viewfinder will all go into the same folder. And that way I have it organized. And then when I get some free time, I'll edit it to put it together. All right, that's it. Oh, and then all the stuff off the phone gets airdropped over to my computer and put in that same folder as well. So there you go, that's, that's how I do everything. Here's the setup in the van, you know. Um, this, is, this is basically everything, bed back here. There's everything up front. Here's the awesome, uh, I'll show you the, the camera cabinet, right? So you get to see there's a bunch of lenses back there, extra lenses and stuff down here, extra batteries, all that stuff. So, and then the computers go up there. All right, so there you go. That's how I live in the van. Hope you guys enjoyed. So the only way to shoot backlit here is to shoot from in the water. And it's way too freaking cold for that. I'm gonna head down here, there's more of them. I think there might be some Dunlin too. And there's some like uh, wet flats that I can maybe get some reflections in. I wanna try and shoot down the beach too. So I'm gonna see if I can kind of just gently come in on the edge of this flock here without spooking them, see? And 
I figured this is what would happen, they'd get split, but now I can sort of move in. And these waves are coming up, so it should bring them up towards me. Last by me. <laughs> Let's talk about perspective a little bit here. So see what it looks like when I'm up here. It's a nice clean shot. It's hard to see when they're running that fast. Um, but anyway, it's a nice clean shot, but watch what happens to the foreground when I lay this thing all the way down. See how much more blurred that foreground is? Watch. As soon as I come up here, see all the in-focus water I see now, or sand that I see? And then watch. I come down here, and it's just gone. Now it's just clean sand that's blurred in the foreground, and then the bird is the only thing in focus. So now I can just watch these waves in the back and see if I can get them with like a nice, pleasing look with the gradient. There's the foam. Washing in, I always like getting that when I can. So many sand rocks. But you can see if I come up a little too high, watch, then all of a sudden I have a lot more in focus sand and everything. And it's not necessarily horrible, but that dreamy look comes from just getting this lower perspective there. I would love to have a stationary bird too. Look at this flock over here. Light's no good this way though. Definitely better out to the right. Here comes the foam. I missed them. There we go. Look at them on. Go, Sandy Wings, go. Oh my gosh. They're so fast. See, from here, then I can start to get that wet sand reflection a little bit. I just got to watch these waves don't hit me. So now the whole flock is down to the right, so I kind of just have to watch out to see if they'll come back to me, which they probably won't. Oh, there's some bathing out there. Oh, there, he just lifted up. That's always fun. Man, it's just mayhem in there. Oh, this is kind of cool though. If I can get that gull to turn towards me. With the whole flock around them, you know? Looks super cool. Let's see what else to do with these guys. Oh, those bathing birds are awesome. There's so many of them. This guy's all out in there. Look at this. Look at that. Ah, uh, wind is the wrong way. So they're flying out the wrong way. Like facing the wrong way. Yeah, this whole flock is moving away. What to do, what to do. So if I really wanted to get the creative shot, I'd lay right in that sand, that wet sand, and shoot right down the way here, just like this. Watch, watch what happens when this, uh, the wave kind of washes away a little bit, especially if I zoom in here. See the reflection on the sand? That nice wet sand? Looks amazing. So you can get it from here. It's just not as easy. And then you can see, see how it starts drying up there? And then you kind of lose it, you know? So as those waves wash away, you lose that reflection. So the other challenge of shooting these this way is I'm shooting in towards the water. And so I don't get that background separation, you know? I'm always getting this like, these crashing waves, you know? 
So if I get close enough, it's blurred enough, which is nice, especially if I shoot it to eight. Uh, but the other way to fix it is to shoot kind of down the beach, you know? Yeah, this whole flock is really far away now, so let's see if I can move in on them again. Nothing behind me either, so it seems like it's just this flock. I do have the gulls out on the rocks. I was hoping maybe some turnstones would be out there, but there isn't anything. All right, ooh, laughing gull. Hey, buddy, what you got? Look at this guy running. So he just picked up something there. So I'm gonna drop him on the bottom right, make sure I have a nice composition. He's gonna constantly face away. Oh, there we go, he fixed it, okay. I was gonna say from the wind, but he kind of turned back towards me. There we go. A little bit of negative exposure compensation, make sure that white doesn't blow out. Also gonna lower my base ISO here. And there he goes. Ooh, everybody just got flushed. I wonder what happened. Osprey overhead. I don't know what this is over here. Yeah, just an Osprey. Osprey there, Osprey there. Huh, it's kind of surprising. I don't, I don't know if those shorebirds are gonna come back. You know what might be cool? There's just enough waves down here and these gulls are flying low a lot. If I could get them like flying back to land into the rocks here, um, with the waves kind of splashing, it might look pretty dramatic. Actually, they're hitting the water in the waves right by the rocks there. It's kind of wild. They're gonna be facing the wrong way, probably, but they might turn and, you know, twist around and give me something. Also got this laughing gull that just landed on a rock here. So I might be able to do something with them, but check it out, look. Look at them like hovering right in that space down there. See, look, they're feeding right in that crazy surf. It's pretty wild. Man, if the wind was just slightly different, they'd be flying towards me into this light. It'd be freaking amazing. But, there we go. Alright, so let's see. Oh, he landed, but he didn't stay. Alright, there's a shot. Let's see. Nope, they will not stay. Let's see what happens here, though. See if we can get, like, one of those turns towards us. Alright, so with this, I don't like um, Aperture Priority Auto ISO anymore. Because it's changing too much based on whatever is in the background there so brighter background then I come over to the rocks and then they start overexposing and it's just all <laughs> that was wild it's just all over the place so at this point we're gonna go manual kill auto ISO let's go up to 200 ISO see if we can get a good exposure on these guys hey oh there we go coming right at us all right let's see 2500 plenty of shutter speed you almost had something also, let's just go for this. Let's go for the close shot. This is tough. Um, when they're flying at me like that, they're tending to be a little high. Wow, these things are amazing in the air. Um, anyway, they're tending to be a little bit higher, see? And it's not as interesting. Although when they fly back, I could probably cheat down a little bit here, let's see, without getting wet. Just gotta keep an eye on the surf. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to 400 millimeter, only because when they do fly towards me, I'm clipping the wings too much. Oh, here we go. Stay there, waves. Right, I'm good. Here we go. Coming in, coming in. There. See, so wait for that bank shot. But I really want them flying low towards me over the crashing rocks. That's what I'm after here. This could be cool. And the wind is not at my favor, though. Here we go. Come on. Yeah, see, just a mess of the background there. He went low too fast. They're so loud. See, they're in the right spot, but just facing the wrong way most of the time. Here you guys coming back. Yeah, a little too close. You know, I mean, 
I could just get a nice flight shot when they come back to fly over this. Um, ooh. See, if they come back over these rocks like this from a higher perspective, it's actually better. But I also just had another idea. So this is how it goes, folks. You look at what you have here to work with and see if you can make something interesting. So they're flying the other way, right? But it could be, well, I missed that one. It could be some cool backlight with the sun back here. And look, the, um, the sand goes further along the rocks here on this side. So when they're working up further there, I might be able to shoot back at them as long as I don't get too wet here. I mean, getting a little wet's not the end of the world, but I'm hoping not to get a total mess. So I'm sure they won't care about me at all, these birds. But I also don't want to get splashed like crazy here. So let's see, they have to fly up there a little bit. Nah, it's not quite the right angle for backlight. Damn. All right. Feels a little sketchy out here. <laughs> These waves crashing over. I could use the one to 400 now. At least they're flying at me, right? Look at that. But the lighting is like a, such a weird angle. See, there's no light on their face. Yeah, that's not working. All right. Well, it was worth a look. I saw something down there. It's just crows, though. F and go landed. Check this out. Watch this foreground. Uh, not good light, though. I'm on the wrong side of it. All right, so if you get this little hill, look at that. You can do this nice, like, dreamy effect. And if he comes up high enough, I can hide all those big crashing waves. Come on, buddy, come up, come up. Yeah, he's heading down. Bummer. I'm kind of out of ideas for like really fun, creative stuff to do here. You know, I mean, the portraits look nice, but they're all just pretty kind of standard portraits. Um, Yeah, I really just don't know what else to do. The light's kind of fading. All right, there's a sanderling bathing again. See, now you gotta watch your shadow on them. I'm trying to see where there's better, good water. Let's see about this guy. Oh, he just flew out. There's the whole group. Try and grab some of these as I run by. Oh, sorry, we got more. <laughs> Look at those legs go. <laughs> He's running with food. Look at them, what are they waiting for? Here comes the phone line. It's so fun. So the other composition technique I can try is going high in the frame. So I really lead it in with out of focus foreground and just let the top be all that whitewash. If you go up here, you get kind of whitewash and blue. So, neither is right or wrong, just different. Ooh, he's getting it. You got something. Go wash it. And then run back. <laughs> so fun. We got another one, man. He's doing good. Yeah, I gotta say, I feel like I'm a little uninspired out here right now. I just don't know. I can't think of anything just really particularly different or cool. 
I mean, I guess that running straight at me like that would be nice. That would be a fun thing. So I should probably concentrate on the action. Because the portraits are, I mean, they're fine. They're all good. Like, look at that light, you know. The light's amazing. But it's, uh, it's nothing special. It's nothing that hasn't been done. I have done it a ton of times. A million people have done it a ton of times. So it's kind of just like, what am I doing, you know? Am I just shooting the same thing over and over again? So um, that's a little of what it's feeling like to me. So, I guess what I'll try and do is concentrate on some action here. And I gotta stop hitting that manual focus ring. So I guess I gotta get a little bit higher. That white line back there is tough. That white line of uh, ocean, I mean, you know? Even if I It's going to be clean if he gets a little bit closer. There we go. Now, of course, we have a ton of birds in the background. Kind of interesting. So let's see. Here we go. Man, this is so hard to track them when you're trying to keep this lens low. All right, let's wait for the action. either catching something or running, running away, running towards me. I got something. Oops. And I lost him. And then they're gone. Grab a couple of those shots right there. The bubbles look nice. So notice as I'm doing this, I'm always trying to keep... Uh -huh. Miss that one. Always trying to keep them in the bottom corner or top corner, just like the corner of the frame somewhere, compositionally. Here he comes. <laughs> so fast, these little guys. <sighs> I don't know what to do, what to do. Yeah, I guess I could come up a little higher and work with some of these reflections here. See that? Now I'm seeing a little bit more of that, which is kind of nice. But I don't know. It just sort of feels like it loses that dreamy feeling when you come up this higher perspective like this. Uh, that's not too bad right in there. Now I just need an isolated bird though. There we go. Grab that. Come on. Always waiting for them to turn their head into that light. Man, the sun just popped a little bit more. It looks amazing. That's nice. That's good with the reflection. Okay, oh, watch out for this wave. This guy's coming right into it. Look at that, ah, oh, too many birds. Oh, jeez. Oh my goodness. Oh, there goes everybody. It's just a the thing they do, I guess. Look at him go, go. Oh my gosh. That was some erratic stuff, wasn't it? Oh, wave was about to get me there. Time to move. Hmm, some dramatic light, side light on this gull here. Look at that. Oh, these guys are stunners. There we go, right there. As soon as I get that light in the eye. Come on, buddy. I wonder if I can get them walking by me here. This guy's looking really good. Uh, there we go, right there. See that light in the eye? Really nice. Man, if you can get the head on, you get a nice split. This guy's gonna come in the lens. Uh, give me the light, there it is. Tough to compose. See if I can get his attention here. <laughs> Lighten it up just a little bit. Oh man, such pretty colors on them. All right, let's see. Here we go. 
make sure I don't overexpose those whites. Oh, this is beautiful. Come on, turn, buddy, turn. Look at that. Wet sand reflection. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Almost. Oh, damn. Oh, gotta turn myself here. He's just not turning his head into the light here. Come on. There it is a little bit, but that wasn't that nice. Let's see what this guy's doing. There we go. Looking for a cleaner background. There. Let's hit that foam, hit him. Oh, I love when they get the foam. Oh, this is cool. Surround with the sanderlings. Come on, turn your head. He just ducked when they flew in. How hilarious was that? Now he's like yelling at them. Wow. Guys, this light just turned on now. Woo! It is fun being surrounded by these birds. Here they come. Running straight at you. <laughs> nice. That was fun. Oh. Oh, here we go, gold coming at me. Oh, I missed it. Look at that beautiful light. Make sure I don't clip his tail. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Let me try this guy. Look at that. Oh, stupid little grassy stuff right next to him. It made it so the beach isn't completely clean. What a bummer. Get it back to vertical here. Oh man. I think he wants to check me out and see if he can eat me. <laughs> That was close. Trying to get the feet in. Come on, turn your head. Lighten up just a little. There we go. Look at that. Just like that. Perfect composition. I'm really happy with it. Just getting his legs in. They're on the same focal plane as his head. I'm going to shoot this a bunch. Look at that eye ring. Oh, what a beautiful portrait. Ooh. Play with a little tail action here. Oh, the other thing, fun to try, right? Let's get creative. Oh, man. Let's see if we can get just some feet in there. Mm, doesn't look good without the webs, I don't think. Like the web feet you need, you know? I mean, it's interesting with the water running over it like that. But look at it. It's just like sticks going in. If he picks his feet up like that, like when he did. Oop, I got to watch out. Oh, look at the water running over him. Shooting a bunch of these because there's a bunch of sanderlings blasting through. Nice. This vertical fits really well. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Gotta watch out myself here. Whew. There goes everybody. Let's see if they're going to come back. Uh. Oh, oyster catchers. Where are they going? Let me watch them. See if they might be landing anywhere out here. Mm, I think they are. Coming back. 
Hmm. Come on, land. Chasing these crows. Wild. Come on. There we go. Let's see if we can go get some oyster catchers. Sweet. Hey guys, this is what I used to do. Engagement sessions. This is a lot more fun though. All right, now we gotta see how skittish these oyster catchers are. Although, there were two. I, don't, I just see the one landed here. Maybe the other one's up in the mix here, but we'll see. Light's really starting to fade. Thin layer of clouds. See that? So while the sun is perfectly low, it just doesn't have much power. So, let's see what we can do here though. Oh, man. Not even close. Not even close. He went way down beach. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother chasing him either. All right, I mean, I got the sanderlings and the laughing gulls down here, but um, I already shot them and the lights faded already, so it's not gonna be as good. Now, if I could backlight them up in here, do you guys see the sparkle on the sand in the wide view? Look at what this looks like through the lens. Like imagine if I had a bird up there that foreground right there oh my goodness so it's all these little tiny shells you know look at this see them? all the little sand and shells that are just reflecting man you put a bird I mean foreground or background but foreground would be cleaner see that like if I uh, if I had the bird further further away that would be a really clean foreground whereas if you focus here you get the bokeh in the background but look how dirty it is how messy so to fix that I would lower but then look I lose the bokeh so that's why, you know, having the bird further in would be nicer. And then you get the foreground bokeh, which is out of focus. And then the whole shot looks cleaner. Cool, right? It's perfect for backlight, but the front light is just kind of dull now. Watch, I'm just going to show you on these birds right here. Look, see how kind of, like, even if I expose for it, see how the glow is barely there. I mean, it's, it's fine light. I mean, it's actually good light, but compared to what I was shooting just a little bit ago that had that golden glow, that's kind of gone and so yeah it's just not cutting it anymore so I'm going to make my way back here because it's also freezing and I got a early start tomorrow and see if we can see anything along the way but other than that I think it's gonna be a wrap on this shoot but got some killer portraits that's for sure <laughs> 